everybody welcome back or if it's your first time thanks for tuning in today it's all about snaps or re-entries or off the lips or whatever you want to call them but first thing it is crucial that you have a good understanding of the Attenborough how to bottom turn tutorial so go back and check it out you can do so by clicking the link below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our latest adventures and tutorials a snap is an explosive off the lip maneuver performed in the critical part of the wave, generally following a sharp bottom turn as the surfer reaches the lip at an angle between 50 and 90 degrees. They then rotate the upper body with the core engaged to sharply change the direction of travel. The nose and then the tail of the surfboard hitting the lip before dropping back into the wave, setting you up down the line for your next maneuver. When performed with speed, power and control, a snap is one of the most satisfying maneuvers in surfing. Mistake number one, trying to watch your spray. This is a big no-no. As tempting as it might be to look back and check out your fully sick spray, don't ever do this because where your eyes go, your shoulders go. Where your shoulders go, your hips go. And where your hips go, your board goes. So if you look off the back of the wave, it's most likely where you're gonna end up. Instead, as you're coming off the bottom, always be looking up at the section that you wanna hit. And then as you're coming off the lip, be looking back down the line to see where you wanna hit the bottom again to drive into your next maneuver. Mistake number two, wave selection. Not all waves and certainly not all sections are suitable for performing a snapping maneuver. You cannot do a snap on a flat section or where there is no lip present. This is because you utilize the lip's momentum to drop back down the wave's face. So if you try and do a snap on a flat section, you'll likely bog rail, lose all your speed, fall off the back, or a combination of all three. Mistake number three leaning too far back. It's a common misconception among beginner and intermediate surfers that leaning back into your turns will make them look bigger, more powerful, throw more spray. I don't know, but this is not true. It's actually the complete opposite. You want to stay low and compressed with your weight slightly over the front knee. The only time you decompress slightly is in the transition stage as you're winding up to go into your snap. The only exception to this rule is the layback, but that's a completely different bucket of frogs and we'll get into that in the layback tutorial. Mistake number four, board selection. The same way that not all waves are suited to doing a snap, neither are all surfboards. Choosing the correct surfboard, especially in the learning stage, is going to make your life a whole lot easier. The surfboards that are going to be less suited to doing a snap are going to be your single fin, your longboard, your twinny, your mini mal. I'm not saying that they can't do snaps, they definitely can. But for the purpose of learning, we want to make it as easy as possible. Best suited surfboard for this is going to be a high performance board for average to good waves. My recommendation for someone about my size Six foot one, 85 kilos, would be a 6'2", swallowtail, around 32 litres. Mistake number five. Throwing the whole bloody kitchen sink at it. It can be easy to get all excited as you're coming off the bottom and start thinking that you're just going to smash the section and absolutely blow it to pieces and do the biggest turn ever. But trust me, this isn't what is going to happen. Instead, you're probably stiff, your timing will be off, and you'll just blow the section all together. First thing we need to do is find a section that's going to be suitable for performing a snap. What we're looking for is any one of these three sections. 
First one is where you have a section that is close to the crest on the running part of the wave. To hit this section, you have to drive from behind the white water, coming off the bottom sharply and hitting the section in the critical part of the wave. The second is where there is a section down the line that's going to be crumbling by the time you get to it. These sections are perfect for foam climb snaps. The third is where you have a closeout section that's coming towards you. These sections can be a bit dangerous to hit if they are too hollow because once you come off the lip, you're dropping back into the impact zone and the most powerful part of the wave. This is one of the easiest ways to snap surfboards. So always take into consideration your landing before hitting a closeout section because it might save you a board. Okay, so now you've decided on the section that you want to hit and you're looking at it. And now you have to decide where's going to be the best place to start your bottom turn from. You want to do a nice compressed low bottom turn, keeping the weight slightly over your front knee. Keeping the arms low and reaching out and touching the wave's face with your trailing arm. Keeping the eyes locked firmly on the section that you want to hit. Once you reach the transition stage of your turn, in the middle part of the wave, the nose of your surfboard is going to be on a trajectory towards the lip. At this stage you want to decompress slightly, coming up from the knees and the waist important to make sure that you're not just straightening your front knee because this is going to shift your weight backwards and store your surfboard. We want to keep our weight forward over the front knee. As you decompress slightly, the arm that reached down and touched the wave's face should now be swept behind you, being used to rotate the upper body and load you up like a spring ready to hit the section. At this stage, the leading shoulder should be aimed towards the lip. The leading arm starts to come away from the body until it is at about shoulder level. At this stage, the nose of your surfboard should be at or above the lip. Start to turn your eyes back, leading your shoulders, looking back towards the bottom of the wave. Now we're starting to hit the lip and rotate through it. Compress back down, getting our weight and momentum moving back down the wave's face. We do this by bringing our arms back down low and bending from the knees and the waist. This ensures that you stay balanced, avoid oversliding the fins, and absorb any energy from the impact that may cause you to become off balanced. Now turn your focus back down the line to the next section that you want to be hitting and start the process in your head all over again. Start to think, okay, here's the next section that I want to be hitting, so I need to start my bottom turn here. We do this so as we're coming back down the wave through the transition section, you can be lining up your next bottom turn to use the speed from your last snap to drive into and set up your next maneuver. The process does not change with different variations of the snap. The only thing that may change slightly is the angle of attack off the bottom turn and then the drop back in. An example of this is going to be with a closeout snap where instead of driving back off the bottom into your next maneuver, you're going to be straightening out. Or a speed check snap. This is not a critical maneuver. Instead, it is just used to set you up down the line for a better section. A good way to practice your snap is up against a wall. You can replicate the low compressed body position on the bottom turn. The trailing arm reaching to touch the wave's face, then sweeping back twisting and loading the upper body to rotate through the lip. The slight decompression in the transition stage and then rotating through the upper body, driving the waist around and then shifting your weight forward, bringing the arms low and compressing through the knees and the waist again to set up your next bottom turn. The concept and processes for doing a backhand snap are exactly the same as a forehand. The main differences are that the leading arm reaches down and touches the wave's face and then starts pointing towards the lip, whilst the trailing arm is out from the body being used to load up the rotation. Once the nose of your board is heading towards the lip, you'll start to turn your head back towards the bottom of the wave. But as soon as you do this, you can no longer see the section that you're hitting. On the forehand, your body is facing towards the wave's face, so you can see the section that you're hitting. But on the backhand, your back is facing towards the section. So you can see the section as you're doing your bottom turn and halfway through the transition. But as soon as you turn your head to rotate through the turn, 
you can no longer see the section. Because of this, it's important to make sure that before you turn your head, that you're not gonna be hitting the section too late, or else the wave's gonna hit you in the back and you're gonna get drilled. The weight transition throughout the turn is the same. The whole time, the weight stays over the top of the surfboard, even though the surfboard gets vertical and hits the lip. If you were to stop the turn, the weight would be low and slightly over the front knee, being used to stay balanced and compressed. Once you've hit the section and are starting to straighten out to drop back into the wave, the trailing arm can be used to reach down and touch the wave's face or the rail of your surfboard to stabilize you. This also helps to keep you compressed and absorb any energy from the drop. You'll now be ready to start the whole process again and set up your next maneuver down the line. You can practice your backhand snaps the exact same way as your forehand using any wall. Bending down low as if you were going to touch the wave space. Looking to the section that you want to hit whilst rotating with the upper body. The leading arm starts to point towards the lip whilst the trailing arm is out from the body being used to balance and load up the upper body. Imagine the nose of your surfboard is reaching the lip of the wave. You are now going to start to rotate back the other way. Turn your head and look back towards the bottom of the wave following with the shoulders. It is important that you keep your core engaged so that your hips and then your feet follow your shoulders. Compress low, spotting the next section and setting up your bottom turn. And there we have it, snaps. If you found this video helpful, let us know by hitting that like button or even better, drop us a comment and tell us about it. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little reminder bell so you don't miss our next tutorial, which is one of my personal favorites, calves. See you next week, guys.